All right, thanks everybody. Uh, so as, as Brady uh, so eloquently put it, my name is Matt Galligan. I'm the co-founder and chief strategy officer of a company called Simple Geo. Uh, this is Mike Panchenko, and we're gonna talk to you a little bit about the real-time location revolution. Okay, so uh, when talking about the future of something, I always like to go back a little bit and look at how we got where we are. And with location, you know, we go very far back to the beginnings of cartography, and the whole goal of that industry, let's say, uh, has always been to constantly improve uh, the maps available, right? Uh, it, nothing new here. Uh, the surveyors and the explorers would go out and come back with their findings, and then their findings would get uh, applied to maps, the maps would be reprinted, and hopefully, by the time you uh, set out for the Oregon Trail, you had the latest map, and you, know, you knew where you were going. Uh, we're in a much better place now with, uh, with cartography. You know, we have pretty accurate representations of the world. Uh, and we're getting to the point uh, with the advent of the internet uh, where you sort of get an instant gratification where uh, data that is input you know, right now can be accessed a second later uh, by someone else. So for example, in the event of a natural disaster such as the earthquake in Haiti, uh, <clears throat> it was very, very easy for people to go to OpenStreetMap and say, okay, well, here's where the Red Cross is, here's where you can get you know, aid and shelter, et cetera. And uh, you know, it's not clear in the event of an earthquake in Haiti, how many people had access to computers, but in a perfect world, you'd be able to look on your phone and say, okay, well, this is where I'm going, right? So if something like that happened in San Francisco, we'd very easily be able to locate, because uh, everyone, everyone has a phone. Uh, so uh, that said, location has always been about coming up with the best model possible to represent the world, because that helps you, uh, you know, navigate the world and, and understand it. And yeah, so if location is about understanding the world, then real-time location is about understanding the world faster. And so what do we mean by that? Well, as of right now, there's just too much static in the world. The mapping world has been static all along. We have maps that are static. We have business listings that are static, so on and so forth. So to, to bring it to a specific example, uh, you know, if you took business listings, the world of business listings has lived for you know, basically as long as business has existed. And a lot of times, these databases are, are updated maybe once every month, sometimes six months, just depends upon who you're working with. And so sometimes you can run into this rather unfortunate situation where you pull up your map uh, or mapping app and you come to something that looks a little bit like this. And unfortunately, uh, that, that is going to make somebody a little bit angry. And I don't know that uh, in, in that circumstance I would really trust that application again. And so the, the fortunate piece is that all of this can be solved through real time. Real time interaction, real time data exchanging, uh, so on and so forth. So kind of bringing it to specific examples now, you know, we're, we're in this world now where everyone is a sensor. You are a walking sensor, and it's because there's something in your pocket that is going both directions. It is pushing out data, it's pulling in data, it's constantly reporting data. There's all kinds of different things that have been already developed as a result of this. A great example is a product called Waze. Uh, Waze is a, a product where you just leave your phone on while you drive, and then it tries to understand what roads you're driving on, where the traffic is, and so on and so forth, but it's crowdsourced. All of these devices are communicating together to create a crowdsource bit of information in real time. This is important. So, okay, so we've got you know, your sensors, you've got your real time, but, but why does this stuff matter? Well, it matters because the value of data diminishes over time pretty rapidly. Yeah, so uh, you know, I brought up the example of uh, the Oregon Trail earlier, right? If you got a map from a year ago that maybe had you know, some data missing from it, and you set out and you fail, uh, you know, it's pretty unfortunate, but you know, we're still having this exact same problem. So Matt and I drove down from San Francisco this morning, and we got pretty lucky we didn't hit any traffic. But uh, I was saying to him uh, uh, in the car, you know, uh, it would be awesome if your super smart GPS in your pretty fancy car could tell us in advance, oh, traffic jam coming up, cut over to 280 while you still can. Because usually by the time you, know, you see that red line on your GPS that indicates traffic, you're already in the log jam, you're already not going anywhere, you're, not, you're unable to make the decision. So real time enables you to, uh, enables this sort of communication where without any, you know, without you clicking or anything or looking at anything while you're driving, where you want to be passive, you don't want to be trying to poke at things while you're driving, you just are alerted that you need to change your route. And so this brings us to notifications without user interaction. These kinds of things can happen with real-time location. So as an example, let's theorize an app that is a weather disaster reporting app. 
Now, I just install this app. I don't tell it where I live. I don't tell it, tell it where I go, anything like that. I just install this app. And I happen to be traveling in, let's just say, back in my home state of Illinois, and lo and behold, uh, there's a tornado warning that can pop up. Now, in this example, it would be background location. It would be pulling the weather uh, constantly and kind of in real time, keeping that up to date. Because the reality is, if I've never lived in Illinois, I don't know what tornadoes, how they work, anything like that, something like this can be invaluable and save lives. Now, there's plenty of examples where re real time can create real solutions. Uh, if you take power outages as an example, right now in the United States, the smart grid is not working yet. We've got a long way to go before that happens. If the power goes out, a lot of times they don't even know where the power goes out. They have to wait until phone calls come in. So we can start to preempt some of these things by taking Twitter feeds, geolocating them, seeing where all of this stuff is going on. Disaster relief happens the same way when we see that there's food needed in given areas, civic action, protests, so on and so forth. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's going on with real time that can be really important in creating some of these solutions. Now, Tying it to real life, tying it to user experiences is extremely important. And that's kind of where we get to the next step of this. For example, Path, uh, a, uh, an app where you're able to create a private social network. One of the things that they launched that was kind of interesting and a little confusing at first was, you take a picture, it figures out your weather in real time. And you're like, okay, weather, whatever. But if I want to see the memories that I had on days that were sunny, that might actually be a powerful thing. Uh, with Foursquare, you know, Dennis spoke here yesterday, and he had this great example of one time uh, a few days ago, he said, I want a dance party. And guess what? Through the Foursquare ex uh, Explore tab, he found a dance party. And all of this happens in real time. Uh, there are some more colorful examples, like this app called um, Where are the Ladies At? And it determines in real time where uh, women are checking in nearby and tells you where the highest concentration uh, of those women are, are at. If I may interject, I'm no expert in these matters, but it would seem that you would want to know where the ladies are, when they're there, and not you know, two hours later. And that's another perfect example, as juvenile as the use case may be, it's a perfect example of the value of data, data diminishing rapidly over time, because 10 minutes and they are gone. So <laughs> Skyhook Spot Rank uh, is an example of compounding real-time information over time to create a more valuable data set. So you're able to take this data set that shows where things are happening in real time, and then if you compound that with Let's just say Yelp, Foursquare, Spot Rank. I can create this app that tells me I want to go to a restaurant. I want to go to a restaurant that my friends recommend, but I want it to be a nice, quiet spot. And so these are the kinds of things that can happen. This, these are serendipitous things that occur. And so say I'm walking past that bar, and they put up a nice little notification that says, free beer here. You know, I can walk in, get my free beer, and probably spend a few more bucks. Or maybe I pass by and see that my, Brady, uh, my friend Brady happens to be there, and I want to jump in and have a beer with him. Those kind of things happen. So why are we talking about this? What is Simple Geo? What's the purpose of, of all this discussion? Well, Simple Geo was born out of these problems. When we created the company, we wanted to build games that took place in the real world in real time. We wanted to create games that were as immersive as you know, first-person shooters, role-playing games, so on and so forth. We wanted to take these games and put them into the real life. Now, how were we going to do this? Well, we had to create this real-time system. You know, and one of the things that we conceptualized was a spy game that took place in a city. Now, unfortunately, that spy game sometimes uh, may, be in, may be hampered by fog. If I wanted to use my sniper rifle and shoot my foe across the city, fog you know, may be a problem. And so what we wanted to do was, was use some of these mechanisms. It also has to do with uh, you know, ping times. And in video games, if you have a bad ping time, somebody's already gone far away before you're trying to even shoot them. And so what we tried to do was create a system that was extremely fast so these ping times weren't even worried about. This is essential in gaming. This stuff is real time. Like This stuff needs to happen in real time as it is occurring. So we created a, a product called Simple Geo Storage to uh, address this specifically. Yeah, so you know, we're here talking about the future of uh, you know, geodata in real time, and we are a company that does real time geodata. So, obviously, the future of the industry kind of, you know, we kind of have to uh, think about that all the time and uh, build stuff for that. So, we built Simple Geo Storage, and Simple Geo Storage is a system that is uh, basically uh, built with the assumption that there's going to be a ton of data in it, it's going to be coming in really fast, and people are going to want it to be very durable. You know, uh, that's just 
pretty typical thing you want from your database, right? When you put something in, you want, you want it to stay. So we built it out. Uh, it's uh, distributed, uh, you know, uh, redundancy is baked in. And the special sauce that we sprinkled on top is the fact that you can do complex queries on top of it, such as geospatial queries. So you can dump tons of data uh, into it and then, and then perform complex queries. So, you know, the Groupon guy shouldn't have to worry about making spatial queries. You should be worried about making deals. And that's, that's, what, that's what we want to do, right? So we've gone from games to sort of more serious, more real world problems. Um, and, you know, uh, just a quick heads up on what's coming down the pipeline. Right now, you know, our, our querying mechanisms, I say it supports, you know, complex querying. Right now it's only, you know, nearby queries and, you, and, you know, you can do time slices. What we're about to roll out probably in the next few weeks is uh, querying by polygon and querying by any random property that you attach to the record, including range queries and ordering. So basically it's just a database, but you don't have to worry about running it. Uh, and it'll support the kind of real-time interactions that we're talking about. And that's, so that's it. So that, uh, that is our talk. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, uh, go ahead and point them to our Twitter. We'd be happy to answer them. And uh, thank you very much.